One Piece live action. Is it good? Is it bad? And what is the opinions of an individual who only got into the One Piece fandom through the manga about six months ago? Do I like it? Do I hate it? What is my overall thoughts? Well, today I want to talk to you guys briefly about that. Now, many of you know, live action anime manga normally doesn't work too well. There are some hits that I've really enjoyed, like Alice in Borderlands. That was a great adaptation into live action. But typically when they do the more fantastical elements or the fantasy elements, like Full Metal Alchemist or Death Note, or Netflix gets to make it, it just doesn't work. Looking at you, Cowboy Bebop. So... I was a little hesitant with, with this stuff coming out, but when it first started to come out, I actually was excited because it looked really good. Now, as a fan who just got into the whole One Piece fandom and has weirdly become very protective of it, even though I just started reading it, that no one's allowed to dislike anything involved in One Piece, I was kind of apprehensive that this was not going to be a good storyline, but I enjoyed it. Like, I really, really did enjoy it. And I got to watch it with my wife, and she really enjoyed it. And I'm going to talk about what I really enjoyed in the highlights. Now, I don't want to nitpick in this video. I don't. There's plenty of things we can nitpick. There's plenty of problems with it in general. But overall, the overall presentation, the overall way it handled itself, I don't feel like nitpicking it because I enjoyed it too much. The music was incredible. I've been listening to the music on Spotify following it. Actually, putting that music on while I continue to read the manga. Been enjoying it so much. I loved the presentation. The acting worked really well. The characters in the first episode were a little stiff and I was a little worried about it, but as the series kept going, they kind of grew into their roles. One of the big things that I noted was how condensed down they made the story to make it work in eight hours, and they really made it work. The stuff that was cut... I don't feel like was super, super important, but at the same time, I also wanted it. The best example I can think of is the uh, when they say farewell to Kobe, I really, really enjoyed how they handled it in the manga. The live action, in order to make it move faster, had to condense that down, just like Nami arriving on the crew much earlier than I remember. And maybe my memory's spotty, but everyone kind of arrived at one point instead of having individual arcs introducing them to the crew. All of that was handled, handled in a great way. Most of the stuff that was changed drastically in the live action I still preferred the manga slash anime presentation of it, but I think it did a great, great job. Now, like I said, I was watching this with my wife the whole way through, and she has zero interest in One Piece. She knows of it. She knows people tell her that she should be reading it. She knows that I've been reading a shit ton of it, but... At the same time, she hasn't had any desire to get into it. For the same reason, many people that I'm sure any One Piece fan knows have stated, it's too much. I don't want to read it. I don't want to watch it. It's too much. I think I'd enjoy it, it's too much. That's why she never bothered. She's said the exact same excuse. So watching these eight episodes, seeing her reactions, the questions that she had, it was so much fun because they didn't change the story in any major meaningful way, I should say. There are some changes to the story, how the characters met up, how they handled things, stuff like that. And I do think the manga and anime handled it all better. But the live action itself still maintained the overarching story. It still maintained all the key beats we need to understand Romance, Dawn, East Blue Saga, the whole thing. It kept to that the whole way through. It did such a good job that when I got to the ending, my wife was like, okay, what's going to happen next? And I was like, well... Do you want me to spoil it? Do you want me to tell you what's coming next? Or do you want to wait and see if Netflix is going to approve season two and come back and do season two in a couple of years? And that was her initial reaction. And then we went over and watched a couple episodes of Demon Slayer season three, the Blacksmith uh, Village arc, which is basically an amazing one giant fight. Like within two episodes, they're fighting the whole time. And we're on like episode eight and she looks at me and she's like, I'm getting really tired of this. She loves Demon Slayer. She's a huge fan of Demon Slayer. And she looks at me and she goes, I'm getting really tired of this. They're just fighting on this season. And I'm like, you know, you're kind of right. The blacksmith arc is really just is a giant fight. You know, Tanjiro, Nezuko, they're not doing anything. We don't have all their friends. We're just doing a big fight. So we took a break and she goes, what about One Piece? Does One Piece just have long, extensive fights like this? And I'm like, well, they do. They do have big fights. But there's a lot of character moments between the fights and in the fights. The live-action One Piece show got her to finally want to watch the anime and see what happens to these characters. And that is the biggest point I wanted to make this video for and just basically talk about. That show did such a great job getting people interested in the world of One Piece, that my wife, someone who has had zero interest in watching One Piece, reading One Piece, wanted to watch One Piece. And it ends perfectly 
at the beginning of Reverse Mountain. The only thing you're missing if you watch the show that I was able to track is they haven't introduced Smoker in the show except for the little teaser scene at the very ending of episode eight. So me and her in two days watched the entire Netflix show and then within a day, she wanted to watch the anime. And then within two days, she's halfway through Alabasta. We went from Reverse Mountain to Whiskey Mountain or Whiskey Peak to whatever the name of the chopper arc is into Alabasta all within two days. That's how into the show and into the universe of One Piece, that show got her. Now, my overall opinion with the show, I thought the cinematography was great. The CG was mostly good. They did a lot of dark fight sequences overall and that's where the cg looked the best when they went into the daytime it got a little spotty uh changes to some core characters like why mihawk shows up was a good excuse for that to happen whole fights were cut out like the one with krieg that was completely removed from the show uh they removed log log town and they removed the guy in the chest i don't even remember his name but the guy that gets stuck in the chest and stuff like that they removed that little mini arc things like that were removed a lot of it is handled in a more dramatic tone the fight sequences aren't as long and engaging but the very last one at arlong park was uh the arlong park rap surprisingly i enjoyed i don't know why <laughs> i really wasn't expecting that uh the fishmen are not as intimidating as they are in the manga and the anime because they're not twice the size they had to make them humans with some makeup i get that that's fine practical effects were used all over the place and i loved that uh the backstories for nami and uh, zoro and sanji were great uh i felt that sanji got the shaft in the live action uh if you've read the manga or the anime i feel like the sanji and uh zef storyline really needed more room to breathe but they decided to combine the mihawk moment with the Zeph moment, which I know it is in the manga and the anime, but they really take time for each. But they had to condense this into two episodes, so basically two hours. And the Mihawk, Jakul, all that stuff fight, that was like an episode and a half, which left the Zeph and Sanji moments to kind of be covered in about 30 minutes. I do, they did a good job of getting it across. I do feel like we could, we should have gotten a full episode of Zeph and Sanji and why their friendship matters and stuff like that. Uh, that was my biggest complaint with that. But overall, it's a great show. It really is. Uh, I don't know if I'm the odd man out because what I, I have generally been avoiding anything involved in One Piece on the internet so that I can avoid spoilers for the chapters that I'm reading. That's why. So I haven't really Googled much One Piece live action, but what, from what I have seen, people seem to be enjoying it as well. So I hope I'm not the odd man out because I really did enjoy it. This is not a Cowboy Bebop situation. It's 100% worth checking out. And I believe me and Kevin are going to do a full rundown of all the episodes. But I wanted to make this video to basically say it's a good show and it does its job. It does. It gets people into the world of One Piece. So if you have that family member or that friend or that girlfriend or that boyfriend that really wants to get into it but doesn't know where to start, this is a great jumping on point. You can go from this to Reverse Mountain and be a part of it, and I wanted to make this video. Like I said, I might make another video with Kevin in which we talk about all the episodes, the changes, and stuff like that, but I wanted to get this one out to give you guys my opinion on the live action and how I feel it does a good job. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back this weekend with Saba Odiark. Uh, we're talking about that, and holy crap, that was amazing, and I'll see you next time right here at Manga Manga Storian.